Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Blue Note. This week here at the Blue Note, a very special recording project is taking shape featuring saxophonist Odin Pope. As you might know, over the last six years I've been doing the Pace Report, I've always supported as well as profiled Mr. Pope for his saxophone choir in which he founded, as well as his trio and quartets. Tonight is a little different because he's going back to his roots, to free jazz, and what better way to bring out this sextet is the great Farrell Sanders on saxophone, as well as James Carter on saxophone, Reggie Workman on bass, Jeff Tane Watts on drums, and the legendary Jerry Allen on piano. Tonight you're going to see and hear some of the new music which is going to be upcoming from a new live album which is going to be on Half Note Records as well as we're going to sit down and talk about free jazz we're going to talk about why Ferro Sanders and Odin Pope are very very important to the music now and moving forward as well as reflect on John Coltrane and how he brought free jazz along with Ornette Coleman and Sun Ra to the forefront so sit back relax and enjoy the sounds of this very special pace report of the recording of Odin Pope's sextet live here on the pace report here at the Blue Note.
Congratulations, Odin, on one pulling this off. This is new music for a new recording with Mr. Sanders. And tell me, first of all, when you were doing and writing the music, did you think of James and Farrell together on this sextet? That's that's the whole idea. It took me about seven months working on this particular project, and I was thinking solely about the characteristics of these two great forerunners of the world, and I was thinking about the music that would be compatible, and it's just working out very good. You know, tonight we're working on, tonight, tomorrow, and the rest of the weekend, you guys are going to be recording this album. You're doing your new material, but we're also revisiting Mr. Sanders. Now, your relationship with Mr. Sanders goes back to 1964-65. Tell me the first time you guys met. Well, you know, uh, Farrell came to Philadelphia and stayed about a year. And it was like, when I met him, it was like going to the highest university in the whole world. He's a, he's a walking university. So, and I was just so grateful that he used to come past my house. I was just so grateful, man. When I, when he left, I felt like I had been to the university. Mr. Sanders, I understand that your time with Sun Ra segued into your time to Philadelphia, in which you were hired by John Coltrane. Tell me about the first time you saw Odin play, and what did you think about his playing? Well, uh, it's, it's so much for me to say. Uh, I just like to say, uh, uh, I think it's around about 1959, you know, I was living in Oakland, and I was, uh, you know, trying to, uh, trying to get this music, trying to, to uh, study, try to get this music together, and a friend of mine, a uh, great, great trumpet player from Philadelphia. Uh, I used to see him almost every day, and he he was he 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 knew a lot a lot of a lot of great great players in uh, Philadelphia that I never even heard of. He was talking about about Odin. We talked about Odin every day. He said he said, "Fair man, you got to hear this cat, man." I said, "Who who, who is it, man?" Uh, uh, Odin Pope. I said, well, who's, who's, who's that? Oh, man, you got to hear him. Man. He, he talked about the way he expressed himself when he's playing and that spirit and uh, that spirit. Uh, and, and plus, you know, I, I was kind of trying to figure out, well, well, who's Odin Pope? You know, he said, oh, man, you got to hear this cat man play. I've never seen him. I've never even heard of him. And and uh, he, uh, my friend, talked about him so much, and uh, we studied nothing but card changes, card changes, card. Changes. I got so tired of hearing that, you know, <laughs> on every tune. He said, "Hey, let's try try it this way. Let's try it with the raised level. Let's, let's, it's so many. Uh, I don't know. It's so, so many many uh, ways to put it. Where he was talking about, uh, talking about how to construct cards and." You know, just try it this way, that way, and different, uh, uh, you know, and uh, it, it it just uh, made me think about it. I said, well, I got to go to Philadelphia, I feel like, and not New York City. You know, uh, I, I feel like even today that I'm missing something. You know, the East Coast uh, struck me as being uh, Philadelphia, because that's all I heard when I was coming up. You know, uh, my f friend was talking about uh, piano players, drummers, and uh, all, you know, you know, musicians all over Philly. And I just, I just feel like, well, man, sure, I, I need to go there and and study. You know, so I, I was uh, just amazed. You know, and 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 me and uh, well, me and Old Dean uh, in person, and I saw him. You know, I said, oh, this is the guy. This is the cat. I said, man, I sure like to, to study with him, you know, you know, uh, it, it was just a, a miracle that that uh, even right now, it, uh, you know, uh, the same feeling when I started w working with John Coltrane. I said, well, what, what, uh, how useful, useful can I be to him, you know, you know, when my friend was talking about him so much that 
the old even this woodshed, 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 you know. No, he, he plays places, but he just stayed in woodshed. And I just remember all that for all, all my life, you know. And I, I always wanted to meet old I said, man, you know. And my friend used to talk about how they solo and how the guests kind of catch, improvise, how they solo. And, uh, you know, uh, and I wanted to really go back there to hear that, you know. And uh, and right now, I feel like this is must be highlight of my life, you know, meeting old Dean when he called me. Uh, said, Farrell, I want you to play with me, man, you know. And I was a little ill at the time, you know, and uh, I didn't think I would be able to do all this, you know. So uh, in March, you know, I uh, I got this stroke in my eye, my right eye, and, and I know it's going to be some reading, but uh, uh, Odin stayed on my case, you know, said, Farrell, you're going to be all right. Believe me, you, you're going to be okay. I said, man, I, I can't see, man, you know. I don't. I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to mess up some. You know his. Uh, you know uh, feelings about. Uh, uh, you know getting me to play. I wanted to be in shape, but uh, he. I guess uh, that, was, that was the time when I. That was the time when I wanted to do something. And, uh, I had to call him and let me tell him that. Well, well, I don't know. I can do it, old Dean. You know, I'm. I'm, I'm in bad shape. <laughs> you know. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I don't know whether I'd be here or not, you know, but he stayed on my case and that helped me, that that gave me a whole lot of uh, 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 energy just hearing him, uh, by him calling me, you know, and I said, man, he's on my case, I, I better, I better play this gig because I don't know, he might, he might hit me, he might, I don't know, you know, he might hit me or something, and I wanted, I wanted to, to, to play, you know. And uh, it, it was all about him, you know, Odin, you know, and uh, he's just a great, great person, uh, uh, humanitarian, you know, and all that. And uh, he's he's a good person in the heart, but he's very serious. I see that he's very serious about the music and about also about the uh, 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 about being humble enough uh, to listen and to understand that. There's a lot of little things the musician have to understand, and you 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 know, to, to really play this music, you know. And so, I was I'm just I feel uh, great to be here, uh, even every day, even right now, you know. And they, uh, you know, knowing that he has helped me and my friend helped me to to uh, accomplish. A lot of different ways of playing, and uh, he just talked about Philadelphia so much. So I feel like uh, my concept is Philadelphia. <laughs> you know, I don't. You know, I want to go to New York City to work. That's all, New York. You know, don't, don't believe that, you know, and uh, <laughs> don't believe that. But he, he was a university when he came to Philadelphia. Everybody was grateful that he was there because. It was like we was going to the University of the Streets. Wow. You know, and in addition to Farrell having a, a, a bachelor, bachelor's degree, he also have a doctor's degree in the University of the Streets. <laughs> <laughs>
Jerry, this is a historic moment for you as well as Half Note Records. Tell me about playing Odin's music with Odin as well as Pharaoh and James Carter. And Reggie Workman. And Reggie Workman and, and Jeff, Jeff Tane Watts, Watts yes. <laughs> well, it's a thrill. It's a thrill to have um, this opportunity. It's like an honor and a privilege to to have been asked to do this. Uh, this is the second night, and um, I'm having a great opportunity to kind of uh, get more understanding of like the, the the way the music is breathing, and it's like learning to to you know the first time playing with Farrell ever and Odin ever, and so it's like a you know the way you, you get to know a person. You know there's a this process of uh, listening and waiting and and, and trying to um, make good choices. So that's kind of where I am now and, and exploring Odin's music. It's uh, beautiful music, um, really inviting and uh, very open and in a kind of way that that really uh, welcomes everyone. So it's it's a joy to be here. And, very, very grateful. This has to be one of your mountaintop performances, performing with Pharaoh Sanders. Oh, yeah. You know, he's brought a very unique and very different approach to the music as well as the culture. And what is it that you're taking away from this whole experience as a musician and also a young lion who actually has brought a lot to the world of this music as well? Well, thank you. <laughs> um, well, uh, it's a privilege and an honor to share a bandstand with uh, great Beryl Saunders, you know, one of my heroes. And um, it's really hard to put into words. Right now, I'm just uh, absorbing every moment. Um, it's surreal, you know, in, in many ways, and so very inspiring. You know, you know, this is a very special week here at the Blue Note, and we have three generations of musicians on the band stage. And James, before we go into this interview, Mr. Sanders, is there anything that you're thinking about as you're hitting the band stage with Odin as well as James as far as their the language of jazz, but also their style and technique? Oh, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm so... Uh, well, uh, 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 my technique, you know, uh, uh, how I feel, you know, I'm trying to uh, listen and make things uh, more musical as possible as I can, and I hope, hope uh, uh, everybody else is is uh, uh, trying to do the same thing, you know. James, when you're playing on the band stage, last night you guys were practicing Odin's compositions. What were some of the things in your mind about playing and gracing the band stage with both of these great saxophonists? First and foremost, um, the blessings that continue to flow by these cultural warriors, musical masters that are still here in our midst. And not only here in our midst, but still having plenty to say that's um, the first thing that pops in my mind and it serves as a direct inspiration to anything that you know that happens on the bandstand and thereafter even after this uh, stint is over with and uh, hopefully it uh, also will help to continue to forge uh, our kinships you know culturally and uh, as well as just you know within a blood brother you know sense you know I, that's the main thing that pops in my mind and um that i hope continues to flourish after the uh the last downbeat come sunday on the 14th you know, yeah you know mr sanders has been held as one of the purveyors of free jazz and one of the things i don't like about that term is because he went against the grain and he forged his own language in the music why is pharaoh now important in the music 
versus when he first came out when he started with Sun Ra and John Coltrane? Wow, that's a deep one right there. Um, <laughs> well, to my ears and to my knowledge, um, when I first heard of Mr. Sanders, first off, uh, my brother, uh, Robert Carter, always talks about you in the highest regards, Phil. I mean, he, in fact, I need to get you and him on the phone together before this is over with. He's been a fan of yours for 50 plus years. And um, the relevance and the importance that comes to mind for me is the fact that he continues, he's that direct, you know, cat that was right there with Train when uh, spiritual, as far as I'm concerned, the spiritual jazz that was being formed, you know, and you were certainly one of the, uh, the cardinal bishops, you know, continue to be one of the cardinal bishops of that and the keeper of the flame to let folks know that, you know, it's not just about changes. It's about being able to be free in one's expression. And you, Mr. Sanders, are the epitome of that, you know. And uh, I'm just grateful to be anywhere within the vicinity, let alone on a band stage with you, you know. That's just, I'm totally floored right now. Even in this, you know, form, this small form of uh, an interview, it's just happening, you know. Mr. Sanders, you know, with that being said, you know, your voice really kind of brought a whole nother fire to this music and you still do this to this day. What keeps you motivated and what keeps you with this spirit? Because like I said, after after there's after you leave here, there's no one gonna be able to carry this torch. Well, that may be a hard one for me too, uh, but you know, uh, like I, like I was, I just want to be a, a part of 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 this, you know, because uh, uh, I listen to everybody, you know, and and uh, I really love the way uh, uh, James play, you know, his his concept and how he uh, articulate all this. This uh, how he put all this together, you know. It's amazing how he can jump from from the low part of the horn up to the top without no problem. It's just easy for him to do that, you know. And and that's amazing, you know. Uh, uh, I've always wanted to, uh, to ask him how you how you do all that stuff like, that? <laughs> you know, uh, you know. But, but 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 at the same time, he can jump. He he he's back on the changes, you know. And he, uh, if, if that's the issue, you know, you know, he's on the changes, uh, 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 you know, and it uh, it just uh, it just kind of like knocked me out, you know. Uh, you know, I'd be listening. I said, goodness, you know, uh, how is he? How is he? Did he jump somewhere else? You know. All of a sudden, you know, it just uh, just amazing how he does that. You know, he's just so talented you know, and got that uh, amazing technique to do all that. You know, I've been meaning to ask him uh, some of that. You know, but um, I guess it's hard to get to him. You know, he's he's you know he's a young 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 leader. You know, I hear playing. You know, I never get a chance to really sit down and listen to him. You know. And uh, I'd love to visit him and ask him a few of those kind of things that he does, you know. And it's amazing. It's, it's really uh, uh, beautiful that he can do all that, you know. I mean, he, he's a great leader. <laughs>
this has been a very, very, very important part of the history of this music. And I wanted both of you guys to sit down because both of you guys are friends and you guys have been doing it for a very, very long time. Tell me the first time you saw Odin play and tell me what were some of the distinguishing characteristics about his playing style and his dedication to the music now and as he is right now. Well, first of all, I was young and Odin was a little bit more experienced than me, so we got a chance to perform together around Philadelphia and the grapevine had had it that you should hear this guy because he's doing something different and sure enough, when I met him, I heard something that I had not heard before and uh, we, we talked, we got it together and we found the matrix as far as the music. And you know, Philadelphia is one of those things where you find maybe you find some jobs and you work together. Uh, jobs are more plentiful then. You do more things. You have more jam sessions and so forth. And uh, we connected musically, and then we met Hassan Ibn Ali and we and Eddie Campbell. Uh, Eddie, I think Eddie Blackwell. No, Ed, Eddie Campbell. Yeah, the drummer. And we started a group together. We started uh, experimenting, doing things. You remember that, Odin? Yes, and uh, we had some really good things going. And uh, something that was not happening around Philadelphia was the sound, because Odin's sound was unique. Hassan Ibn Ali was very important. And they were both composing great things. And uh, my thing was like just trying to uh, be a part of it, be an integral part of it, and, and grow with the music. And uh, being in high school and having a big family and a lot of responsibilities, I did not uh, remain on the scene as much as I wanted to. But eventually, I graduated from high school through all the trials and tribulations of, of boyhood. Uh, and then graduated, got out of school, Stayed in Philadelphia for a while, and Odie and I still were in contact during that time. Once in a while, we would still be in contact because Philadelphia is such a place where if someone's doing something positive, you know, and you go where it is. And uh, whatever comes of it uh, is positive. It's got to be positive because you're reaching for something that you know is important. You know, Odine, I have to ask you this because this project really like we said earlier this is kind of like the young lions meets the elder statesman which you and Miss mr workman are part of tell me why reggie is very important to this rhythm section why you chose him well reggie to me is one of the great forerunners he's the educator and reggie to me has always been very pure inside and outside he's very humble and He's a, one of the best players that's walking planet Earth today. And I, I, I said, well, Reggie, I want Reggie to be on this because he deserves it. He paid his dues. He went to the University of the Streets. He also have a PhD in, in mathematics. So I said, well, Reggie is going to be on this particular project because he deserves it and he's playing his butt off. You know, what's really interesting is that, Reggie, we talk about Pharaoh Sanders, and you were on that landmark record that he recorded, which you guys are revisiting kind of sort of this evening. First of all, tell me, when you recorded this album, you had Lonnie Liston Smith on this record. There were some dynamic musicians on this record. The first time you saw the music to this album and this landmark piece what did you think the first time you saw this well basically you know we we were all working around the east which was the place where the music was made in brooklyn where all the new music was tried out for the first time with an audience of people in the community and all kinds of young people all ages of people who were interested in the music and farrell saunders was a part of that lonnie liston smith was a part of that uh, you name it, uh, many musicians who, who did that and we came together to perform different things and uh, there was a, a guy who played percussion there. Uh, we used to call him Mr. Mardi Gras who, who would always be colorfully dressed and bring a whole lot of percussion stuff and uh, Farrell decided he wanted to try this particular piece 
and uh, he organized the recording. I don't really know much about the organization of the recording, but I know he called me to be a part of the project. So I said, hey, no, I'd love to. And uh, now going back to revisit that uh, <clears throat> is unique and different because, first of all, we've done that a long time ago, and we can listen and hear where we were then. And we want to do something different now without losing the, the aura and the flavor of the tune. That's the challenge, to try to keep the, the really uh, important parts of the tune and yet try to add something different. And just because we're here now in this age, it's different. But the music uh, has to be uh, very tastefully worked on as far as uh, what you're going to do with it to make it s the same but not the same, you know, make it current and yet not lose the aura of it. And I think Farrell has really told us that this is what he wants to do, so we are trying to satisfy his need. Getting on the band stage with him again 40-some years after you recorded this, how was it and how is it playing with him after all these years? Wow, uh, it's, it's great. First of all, Farrell has a special charisma, and uh, he has a special kind of, of, of choice of notes, tone, and as a saxophonist, I think you can hear that. Odin probably can hear that as well as me. He has a special kind of tone. When I was working with John Coltrane, John used to say, well, uh, this guy has something special to listen to his sound and they used to meet and talk about mouthpieces and sound for hours and hours when we were on the road. Uh, so John would find Farrell wherever he was and, and I was fortunately a part of a lot of that, you know, and basically hearing him today and knowing what he has grown through and where he's from and what he has done is really really special because now here he is he's managed to say uh whatever he had to say or do in order to be here today and i'm thanking god for the fact that he's still on the planet because a lot of our colleagues and peers have jumped off the planet and uh with odin and myself and folks like pharaoh and people who were here uh, then and are still here that's a godsend
you know, this is this is really interesting because I, I was talking to Jeff Levinson earlier, and um, he brought something that was very very important to to this whole recording and to the history you're making this week. You know, you are you guys are really the stalwarts of this whole free jazz movement that took place in the late '60s, in the mid '60s, and the music changed because there were a lot of issues that were happening in the music, political issues, people were getting in touch with their identity, their roots. What is it about the free jazz movement that you saw that was getting ready to change and make a dent on jazz music permanently? Where did you see it? Well, you know, Train and I used to play with House and Eminale two or three times a week, piano player, there's a piano player, was a piano player in Philadelphia by the name of Hassan Eminale. Every three notes out of five that we played came from Hassan Eminale, including Train, McCoy, China. And Hassan Eminale was our, our teacher. And he was playing things like two against three, three against four, five against four. Jimmy Murray was also one of those great forerunners. You know, Jimmy Murray, I studied with him for because. Uh, everybody in that group had a nervous breakdown. In Jimmy Murray's group, we were trying to play that music. Everybody but him had a, had a nervous breakdown. Mm. So that's how important and how dedicated we were to to the music. It was so serious and so so difficult and complex. Because what you have to do, you have to learn your whole instrument. You just can't play in one section. Like I was listening to Farrell tonight. If you notice, he's playing from the low B flat to the high F. You don't hear too many pe people play like that. He was playing his instrument from the low B flat, which is two octaves and a fifth. His saxophone is two octaves and a fifth. He play, He plays, Farrell plays the whole range. And he's one of those great forerunners that came along with Train that sort of well, I, I, I think Hassan and, and I, and we, we changed a lot of stuff, too, because Hassan and Minali, he used to practice from 9 o'clock in the morning to 12. His father would bring him food to the, tape, to the, to the piano. 1 o'clock, we would play a couple of games of chess. 1.30, he's practicing up, up until 6 o'clock. Uh, after 6 o'clock, his mother was a domestic worker. She would give him a couple of dollars, and then we would go to about four or five different houses at the night and just play. We would get dressed up. We'd get dressed up and go to these three or four houses and just play music. So I think that's where that, a lot of that free form music came out of House and Emanale. And Train took it to another level, and Farrell took it to another level. Yeah, there, there is the Train connection for both of you, both of you guys studied and you played with him what is it about train now that's missing in not just the saxophone but in jazz music right now well i don't know uh i, uh, I just uh, uh you know i don't know why why john uh i ask myself all the time why did he ask, ask me to play with him you know it wasn't like that I joined the band. He asked me, could I come and work? And I thought about it. I said, well, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I was getting a little nervous. I said, okay, then I, I'll make the gig. I went there at the jazz workshop in San Francisco. You know, I was trying to, trying to I guess, uh, uh, I'll, I always have been quiet. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm just a listener, you know. But uh, I, I never have met, I never did meet John, you know. I never have met him. Uh, well, I did meet him one time, you know, at, uh, while he was working. You know, he had some problems with mouthpieces and reeds and stuff, you know. But when he asked me to come and play, I said, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not ready. I'm not ready at all. You know, then I don't know what he saw in me or uh, be asking me all of that, you know. And I was a little nervous because cause, uh, John was... It was it was a great person uh, uh, for me and a hero and all that, you know. And uh, when I met him, he, John, he, he he wasn't talking that much at all. He he never talks. He, he was always sort of quiet. 
and uh, and I was quiet too, so I didn't know what to expect. You know, uh, uh, John played a solo, started playing the first solo. And he said, he, uh, you got it, Rock. They used to call him, I had another name called Rock, you know, and uh, uh, he, he said, you got it, okay. I went to the microphone, and I said, oh my goodness. You know, how, why do, what am I gonna do? You know, I mean, um, he could have uh, asked any other tenor player that I, that was on a level of, on a much higher level of playing, you know, and they had the mu their music together and and their elements that they need uh, to play, the use, be using the music. And I just feel like I wasn't really ready. But uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, he, he he reminds me of Sunrise, something about him and Sunrise. I don't know what it is, uh, being around them, you know, uh, just something, you know, uh, I don't know what that is, you know. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, I had I had a solo, so <laughs> I did what I could do. And uh, when I finished solo, I said, well, I don't know. Uh, maybe I just better tell John, you know, uh, maybe, maybe someone else out there, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 he can use instead of me. Because I just, I just feel like I, I knew I wasn't ready. But, you know, however, you know, I... Uh, uh, I started working more and more, you know. So I didn't know. I didn't know what it was, you know. I didn't know what he wanted to hear in in me. So I didn't know, you know. So last question, and I, I want to ask you guys this: you know, tonight the world is going to see this 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 new music, hear this new music. What is it that you want music fans to? really really understand when they buy this cd or when they download this on itunes at the end of the day what part of this legacy and this music and history that you want music fans to take away from this i want them to realize uh there are some of the greatest musicians tonight that this country has produced james uh james carter farrell uh jerry allen reggie workman J jeff tay watch is some of the greatest musical minds, like I said earlier, this, this world has produced. And I'm just so honored to, and I hope the people can deep down, like last night, the night before, can really deep down, look deep. I mean, and listen, because there's going to be a whole lot of music played tonight. Mr. Sanders? Well, um, I'm just open. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, I don't know what to expect, you know, but I know it's going to be great, and uh, it's going to be, it's going to be great, and and I hope, hope uh, uh, a lot of people get a chance to hear this mu music, because um, I, I, I'm going to hear it. I'm, up, I'm up on a, up on a bandstand, you know, and uh, sometime. Uh, Odin look at me, okay, you know, I said, oh my goodness, uh, you know, uh, I, I I just be nervous, it's nervous sometimes, because cause, cause I don't know the stuff that I'm doing, you know, is going to fit or what, I don't know, uh, I just hope that that uh, it, it'd be acceptable, you know, by, uh, especially Odin, you know, because he, he hired me to play, so I got to play. And I and I got to really play <laughs> with these guys, you know. And uh, you know, I'm 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 thankful that uh, and uh, he he chose me, you know. And, uh, and he always uh, uh, said good things about me. I hope I can uh, uh, really live up to all that, you know. I told him I I, I sometimes I do get a little strange now, you know. But that's that's something else, you know. But when it comes to music, you know, it, uh, I I feel like it's really all about the music and the spirit that you know that takes us to those playing those higher levels spiritually. Thank you. 